Okay, so this is a quick little test. I booted into Windows and on my screen here, I'm going to open Visual Studio. I installed Visual Studio 2019 and um, I don't know how to use it very well, but um, I have a little uh, solution. It's weird, a solution is like I can like a folder for projects. I'm not sure. I don't understand Visual Studio very well. However, what I did is I took my source code that I got working on Linux. I have several files here. So here I have um, the main.c file um, and all the code here in Visual Studio. But then I also have over here, like I don't. It it shows all the dependencies. Like this is this is weird. I don't understand this stuff, but um, yeah, this because uh, that stuff is included with Visual Studio, the standard header files and all that. Um, but okay, so here I have okay. So first, this is the main file, and it has a whole bunch of setup code. But that's not even the bulk of the code. If you look, if we go to my uh, GLBBM Polygon Core, here is the source code for all of the functions related to polygon drawing. So I have functions that get the points and the um, and various different ways of drawing those points. It's actually capable of quite a lot, but there's the setup to run OpenGL programs is insane. And now here is my make file. But this doesn't work on Windows. This only works on Linux un until I find the right command. Because Visual Studio is actually uh, running some kind of commands behind the scenes. But I don't know enough about Visual Studio to know what it's doing. And it drives me crazy. And so here's my header file. I have a header file it containing the uh, source code for the vertex uh, shader and the fragment shader that I, I stole from tutorials. And then I have this function. This was originally in the main uh, file, but I just made a function make shaders and here's where it compiles the shaders. And then it's called, if I go back to main.c, then it's just called um, from somewhere in here we have make shaders it's called right here and i think that's all of the important files so here here's what i'm going to do um, you'll notice if i go to there's there's all these different options but if notice that start without debugging is f5 so if i click on this um, it should compile and here we have a triangle on the screen and here's what's weird is I can move the triangle, but it goes wrong. Like if I click and I drag, when I go up, the triangle goes down. If I go down, it goes up. Something is wrong with my math. I, something in my math is wrong, but nonetheless, I have a triangle here. And, and I can also, there's different things I can do. I can change the color of the triangle. Blue, green, cyan, red. Uh, magenta, yellow, white, and then I can make it black so nobody sees the triangle. But it's cool, but there's so much more I can do. I can I can press this, so now we see only the, the lines of the triangle. If I press W, it does that. If I press Q, it goes back to that. If I press E, it, do, it does that, but it's actually special. And here, I press R, um, and here we see just that this triangle here is made up of three triangles. That's the tricky thing that I want you to understand, but it gets so much more complicated than that. So I can change the colors um, in various ways. I have these things pre-set up in various ways, and here's where it gets interesting. So I'm gonna show you something. So um, if I press, um, X, then it will go into the mode where it automatically changes to the next shape. I have preset code that I wrote that does this and goes to the next shape. So it's kind of cool. Um, and so, and but then if I press Z, 
it goes back to normal. Now we're going to switch to the lines only mode here and try this again. You'll see that we have a triangle made up of three triangles. Now if we cycle through the shapes again, you'll see the, um, it will go to a square which is, has four triangles. After a while it's going to go to the, um, yeah, it changes over time. Pentagon, pentagram, you see what it's doing there? It's tech, technically it's only drawing triangles, um, but if you draw enough triangles, you can make any other shape. So I took a tutorial of how to draw a triangle in OpenGL, and it was a real pain, but I did get it working. And see, I can change the I can I can change the colors freely. I can do that color mode. I can do that color mode. I can do solid color mode, so it's all the same color. And so you see what this program is capable of doing. It's, it's absolutely amazing. But the, the trick to how it works is actually the fact that there's, see, there's several different functions. I have different functions for different things. And the reason I can press, um, if I go to oh, my callbacks file here, this is my callbacks file. So here's my key callback file. Um, so different keys that I, I press use it at, that are constants defined in GLFW, um, then so it changes these colors. Now, for example, if I change the colors when I'm in solid color mode, I have color R, color G, and color B, and these are red, green, and blue. So by changing those colors, and those are variables that I define in main.c, for example, uh, everything, the, every attribute of the polygon. A regular polygon is actually a complicated structure. And I use global variables for everything. This is not, uh, everyone else will tell you that this is wrong, but this is what I do, is I have variables for every little thing. So I have variables for the, the colors, I have for its rotation angle, for its radius, for its center X and Y locations, and all sorts of things. But all of these different variables all have their function. There's so much work that goes into getting a triangle on screen. You have to create an OpenGL context, and we have to set up glue to load the functions, and we have to, uh, and then I print the OpenGL version. Like, and if I press F5 and run the program again, you'll notice something. Um, we have this window that has the triangle, but then you'll notice it says that it, the version is 3.3.13596 core profile. It's weird because on Windows, it does this for me the way I set it up, whereas it says version 4.6 when I'm on Ubuntu Linux. But it doesn't make a difference, um, really, because the program works the same. But I do have errors in this program. Um, th this, yeah, and something is wrong here because I have my, I, I copied over my, um, in my, in my callbacks, I copied over so much code from my legacy OpenGL thing because some things are the same, but here's the problem is that um, something in my, in my mouse button callbacks or cursor position call, because I have the polygon C, uh, X and C, Y variables, the center be set to where the mouse go is on the screen, but the problem is it doesn't work because I'm using OpenGL coordinates. I'm not using orthographic coordinates because I don't know how yet. And even though my program is exciting and it lets me do amazing things, oh, one more thing it lets me do. This is, this is really freaky. So if I, um, oh yeah, I can change the size of this window. You see how that is? I change the size of the window and then the, the polygon changes its size automatically to fit within the window whenever I resize that. That is all because of this magical code, the frame buffer size callback. And so it gets the new width and height of the window after it's resized. Then it sets the global width and height variables. Then it sets GL viewport, changes the viewport, sets up the variables, all these different things. So I wrote most of this code, but the, the, the frame buffer size callback function originally was copied from a tutorial. So as you see, I know how to get shapes on the screen with OpenGL. 
But what I don't understand is how to actually really make use of Visual Studio. I got this working. I followed the Cherno's uh, tutorial step by step on how to get this working. If I go to properties, I'm going to show you something. So here we have um, the C. Yeah. So yeah, this is very freaky. So in under C C plus, we have additional include directories and yeah. And here we have um, this. It's actually pointing to certain places here. I wonder if. Yeah, it's it's weird because I have a special um, special folders where the dependencies are at. I did exactly what the Cherno said, but it's more complicated. We also have to go to Linker. You also have to have Linker and let's see. There's general and let's see additional library directories, and this is very similar. I set it up exactly as the Cherno um, said to do in his tutorials. Um, so it's kind of freaky, and so I'll show you the folder. I'm going to close Visual Studio, and let's see if I'm still recording. Yeah, I'm still recording. So I'm going to go to my Windows Explorer here. And I'm going to go to my folder, and it's in users, chan, source, repos, OpenGL. It's weird. And for some reason, it just made my username be chan, because my, my Microsoft account is still under Chandler Klebs. But so here we have the dependencies folder here. And we have glue with the, the GL extension Wrangler. And we have the include folder that has the include files. And then if we go back up here, we have the lib. And here we have Win32. And here's the static link library for Windows. I got the pre-compiled libraries. Um, so that's nice. I, I had to download this from certain websites. And here's GLFW. And here we have the include files you see here. Um, and it includes all of the GLFW. I think GLFW sounds for GL framework. I think that's what it means, or GL frame buffer window or something, um, because it lets you create windows in OpenGL context. And here we have the GLFW3.lib. And so you see, I, caught, I did exactly what the Cherno, I mean, that guy, the Cherno on YouTube, he is like a, a wonderful educator. I fo I've been following his OpenGL series. And as you see, I'm able to get um, programs to work on the screen. And here, if I, if I go back up here, um, let's see here. Yeah, it, I have a folder OpenGL inside another folder in OpenGL. And see, there's the project, and there's debug, and read at least modes. Like, this is weird. Oh, what, what's, what's this file? I don't even know what these files are. Oh, there's nothing in there. Okay, that's weird. So let's see here. And then release. Um, so what do we have here? We have various different, ooh, what, what, what's this? Oh, whoa, freaky. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what this means. Oh, there is a, oh, what? Though there's files in here. I didn't even know these files were in here. Oh, wait, what's this? Wait, is this the, um, is this the, something about the commands to, um, oh, weird, I'm not sure. Is this the commands that are, are being run? when it compiles like whoa man this is crazy stuff i didn't know this was here before i recorded this video it's freaky well as you see i got visual studio working it's amazing now where is that exe file yeah that's that's just weird um it's weird because there's debug and release folders there but oh Oh, here's our executable. Oh, weird. This is the executable. So theoretically, if I were to send this executable file, 
it should work for anybody else running Windows 10, I think. So this is the actual exe file that can be run. Now, you might wonder, since I do all my programming on Linux usually, why did I go through the pain of installing Visual Studio and setting all this up? Well, even though Linux is my preferred way of doing programming because I already know how to do it, um, the thing is that using Visual Studio is probably the most reliable way to compile a program and make sure that it will run for other Windows users who aren't programmers. So I, I, I went with Visual Studio this time because thanks to my friend, I actually have a powerful computer that can do this stuff. And also, um, this is really weird. I'm going to show you this. It is not 7.15 p.m. No, it is definitely not. Um, okay, I need to go to adjust date time. Now, look at this. If I say, if I, if I undo this and then do this, then it's 1.16 p.m. The time zone is really messed up for whatever reason. Um, I don't know what's wrong. I think it's because I boot into Linux and then I boot into Windows, but the time difference is six hours off. I, my ride picks me up at 2.45 to go to work. It is 1.16, and so I just had a little bit of time, so I recorded this video so that I could show people how I can now do my OpenGL programming on Windows, but I don't actually write my code on Windows. What I do is I do all my programming on Linux and then see if it works, and then I download it from my uh, website. Oh, that's what I'll do. Before I end this video, I will show you my website. So here, it my homepage is my website. So I have this website, and if I go to this OpenGL link, then it has various things I've done here. My OpenGL programs, which are kind of cool. Um, those are animated GIFs, by the way. But here we have this core link at the bottom. And this, all the source code that I just showed you in this video is all available on this web page. I just simply download it from my GitHub website. I have a website that's meant to be, this chastitywhiterose.github.io is meant to be my programming site because GitHub is for open source programming projects, you know, and so I have a lot of of old code, but there's some amazing things on here, um, like like there's there's this one, um, and there's even a video here. There's actually a video there that you can watch. You can click on that and watch that. Um, it's and this is my legacy OpenGL code here. My legacy OpenGL code, I understand it better. And I actually need to stop programming for a while. I need to finish the Chernos tutorials. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to learn to do anything more beyond what I've, what I've done. But I've figured out a lot. So anyway, that's the end of this. I'm going to end this video. And so, um, actually, let me do something. And that, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, hope you've enjoyed this little video of me showing off my, my programming. Nobody cares about me and my programming, but whatever. Um, I care about it because... Hey, I like shapes and I like drawing shapes with my programming, so it's fun.